this episode of the Nicole Stitches podcast. I am a left-handed crocheter, knitter, and general crafter coming to you from Northern Virginia, where I work and live with my husband, our cat Webster, and our kitten Birdie. You can keep up with me on Instagram at Nicole SP Designs, on Ravelry as she writes things, on Pinterest at NSP Designs, and in my shop, nspdesigns.com, where I make and sell handmade project bags, notions, pouches, and other fiber accessories, as well as original crochet patterns. There's a Ravelry group for the podcast, and you can go there to find a Get to Know Us thread where you can introduce yourself and get to know other members of the group, a Q&A thread where you can leave me questions that I'll answer in a future video, and it's where you can find the monthly pattern giveaway thread where you can enter to win a pattern that was featured on the podcast in the preceding month. Um, it is March 5th today, I do believe, so it is time to announce the February winner. I would have done this last week if there was an episode, I'll get to that in a second, but um, there was no episode, so here we are. Uh, congratulations to the winner. I will put your name on screen, and by the time this video goes up or shortly after, there will be a March giveaway thread open in the group, so go to the Ravelry group, make sure you join, and then you can check out that thread to read the rules, which are super simple common sense rules. Um, and enter to win a pattern that I worked on in the month or that I talked about and new in my queue. So with all that covered, um, hello, welcome to anybody new who is stopping by. I'm so glad that you're here. I hope you decide to stay. And for those of you who are return viewers, thank you for coming back. Um, there was no episode last week. That was not planned. It just kind of panned out that way. Basically, um, I ended up traveling for work. Um, I recently started a new position at my same company. I work, um, if you're you new and I haven't talked about this in a little bit, I work full-time. I have a full-time job um, that I do remotely from home. Um, I've worked for this company for a number of years and uh, I've got a new position with the company. It's basically the same position but with some things kind of shifted, some different things. Um, I'm a writer and editor is what I do basically. Um, and so because I got this change of position, they wanted me to come out to the company office, which is in Wisconsin. Um, so I had to travel for a couple of days. Uh, and so that was where I was for the first half of the week last week. The last half of the week, honestly, was just kind of catching up with life after being gone for three days. Um, while I was at the company office, I was in a lot of meetings and stuff, so I wasn't doing, you know, what I normally do in a work day, so I had that to catch up with during the day. And then um, in the evenings, I had some shop stuff to do, and I had some personal stuff to do. I had to, like, unpack and do laundry and tidy up and things. Um, so time just kind of got away from me. And then uh, on the weekend, we were on Baby Watch. Um, so again, if you're new, I, I've been talking about this with relative frequency, um, but uh, there is like a baby boom happening in my life, <laughs> in my like personal circle. Um, there have been a number of babies that we've been waiting on. Um, my sister-in-law was expecting, and I have at least two friends who I know of who are expecting as well. Um, we're waiting on those babies still, but um, this past week, last week, was Baby Watch. We had been told that, like, it was ready to go. We were just waiting, uh, you know, to get the word. And um, so we were kind of, we didn't want to really do anything because we didn't know um, if Baby was born on the weekend because it was going to be our first um, niece or nephew. We wanted to go up to Maryland to visit, um, to meet them and visit and, and, you know, have that introduction and stuff. Um, so we didn't want to make too, too extravagant plans in case we had to cancel them or change them. Um, so we ended up on Sunday morning um, going to visit our new niece. So uh, we did not know the sex of the baby. Nobody knew, except probably like the doctor. Um, my sister-in-law and her husband chose to keep it a surprise, which I think is really fun. I know that's not the, the norm anymore. It seems like it seems like everyone finds out as soon as they can, um, but they didn't care as long as baby was healthy and happy. That was what they cared about. Um, so none of us knew. Uh, and uh, it, it's a niece, it's a girl. And um, she was born on Sunday morning and we, um, as soon as we got the word, we hopped in the car. Um, I can talk more about the, the whole baby thing at the end of the episode and personal stuff. Um, I will jump into like normal knitting things now, but if you've been waiting, if you were curious where I was, basically that that's what happened. I just, I had to travel for work and then I had to get my life back together when I got home. Uh, and then it, there was a baby. So, um, <laughs> so 
So I just decided, I kept kind of pushing back when I thought I would record, and then I just decided that I was gonna give myself the week and just take take it and not worry about an episode and just, you know, whatever, I would record this week. So here we are, and as you can probably tell, I have got a finished object. We both have finished objects, my sister-in-law and I. I have a couple actually, uh, and I also have a lot of progress on some things, including something you haven't seen in quite a while, and I have a new start, so I'm just gonna get going, and then um, if you wanna hear more about like baby stuff, I'm not gonna go into a ton of detail just because she is an innocent baby, um, and she's not my innocent baby, so I'm not gonna like broadcast all the details on the internet, but I will share some things at the end of the episode, uh, and uh, I'm gonna get to the knitting first though. So, finished objects. Let me start the way I normally do with finished objects. This is my completed Mello Kitty sweater by Casa Pinka. Um, let me stand up here and try to show you. Uh, this always gets a little bit um, boob cami, so sorry, but if I take some nicer finished object photos before the video is complete, I will probably stick those in. Um, but again, this is a colorwork tea style sweater. She does include instructions um, to do long sleeves. And another thing to note is that she includes instructions um, in the pattern for a textured body once you get through the color work yoke. Her model that she knit has the, the textured stitches on it, but it is optional. And knowing my uh, style, the, the type of sweater knitting that I like to do, I knew I wasn't really gonna have the patience to do textured body stitches for very long. So I skipped them and just did a straight color work. Um, and I'm all done. So I knit this in Stroll Fingering Yarn, which is from Knit Picks. Um, the colors are, uh, the blue is Stroll Tonal, which is sold um, separately from like regular Stroll Fingering if you're looking for it. Um, Stroll Tonal in uh, blue yonder. The orange I hand dyed myself on a base of Stroll White that I just had left over. Um, the gray is Dove Heather, and then the hot pink is called Pucker. And this is all Stroll, again, all of it is just regular Stroll, except for the blue, which is Stroll Tonal. Uh, so that's my Mellow Kitty sweater. Um, I finished this hmm, Friday night, I think, Friday or Saturday. Um, I was posting about it on Instagram because <laughs> If you don't follow me on Instagram, you may not know this. Um, by the way, I would recommend following me on there if you really want to know what I'm doing like day to day because I'm very active on there, especially in my stories. I share all kinds of stuff. It's not just posts about my, my shop and my bags. It's about me and what I'm working on and usually how my cats are inconveniencing me. Um, so uh, I was sharing this on Instagram stories, but my cats, they love to... When I block a sweater, I, I wet block basically everything that I make just because that is my preferred blocking method. I like how it sets the stitches. I like how it kind of causes the yarn to bloom and just stretch just a little bit and like set nicely. Um, so this is our spare room that I'm in right now. It's kind of got my shop set up and crafting stuff. Um, and then Adam has his stuff on that side of the room <laughs> behind the camera with his desk and a bunch of like retro game stuff. Anyway, the point is this is our spare room. And this is where I put stuff to block because it's very sunny in here and it's really out of the way of like the rest of our apartment. Um, and every time, every time I block something, typically I'm blocking sweaters, my cats sit on them. And I mean, these are wet, sopping wet, not sopping wet, but like very wet sweaters laid out flat on the ground and they're like wet and cold and they stink like wool. I don't know what it is other than pettiness, but my cats love to come immediately, immediately and like bless my sweaters with their butts. And within, I, Birdie was like watching me and waiting for me to block this. She was following me as I filled the basin to soak the sweater. She was like following me around, watching me do this. And as soon as I had put the last uh, uh, knit blocker, which are these things, um, I don't remember the brand that these are from, but I've been gifted a couple sets of these over time and I love them for blocking. You can find them on Amazon. Um, but as soon as I put the last one in, she sprawled across the sweater. She didn't just sit on it. She like sprawled luxuriantly as if she had been waiting all her life for this. And then she, uh, gave herself a little bath on it, which was great. Um, so basically... This is what cat ownership is like. Um, but I shared that in my Instagram story. So if you follow me there, you probably saw. But it's done. <laughs> this 
was the second sweater that I've completed of my make 12 sweater goal for 2020. It's finished and I really, really love it. I'm really happy with it. It is, um, you know, Stroll is a wool blend and it is uh, basically double knit up here. It's like wearing two sweaters because of the floats. You can see here, I'm gonna flash my floats a little bit. When you have color work, it can just kind of feel like you're wearing two sweaters in that section because you do have two layers of yarn. Um, but honestly, it does not feel like I'm not hot. I can probably wear this through the spring. I don't think I'd wear it in, through the summer. I think it would probably be too hot for that because we live in Virginia and it gets super hot and humid in the summer, but I might try. And I'm also inside a lot. So I think this is going to probably be a really good three season sweater, if not all four. Um, and also I did want to say thank you to the people who commented last episode about helical knitting. Um, I realized that I was erroneously referring to this as to what I did as helical knitting. I guess I must have watched a video that the person misrepresented it as helical knitting or something. Cause I remember watching the technique that I was using and it was being called helical knitting, but it's clearly not. I remember that as soon as somebody commented it, I was like, of course that's, I'm not doing the right thing at all. Um, so thank you for correcting me. You are so right. Um, I appreciate it. And I think that I am going to, actually try real helical knitting next time I do a sweater that uses a yarn that's tonal like this one um, that has the changes in color here or that is hand dyed or anything where um, a, a change in, in color tone would be noticeable. Again, thank you for that. Silly mistake. We all make them. Um, I appreciate it and I'm definitely going to actually use real helical knitting in the future. Um, but that's not my only finished object, my friends. Oh no, no it's not. I have finally, thank the Lord, finished the Brave at Heart mitts, which are a colorwork knit pattern by Diana Walla. They are inspired by um, Gryffindor uh, from Harry Potter. There are four different knit patterns, one for each house. These were a gift for my sister-in-law um, and they are finally done. They were supposed to be a Christmas gift. I did not finish in time. Um, if you've been with me for a while, you know it's been an odyssey knitting these. They were knit on ones, which is much smaller than I'm usually knitting on. And they were knit using fingering weight yarn. So that led to a really tight gauge and it was very hard on my hands. Um, it was very tough. So they're finally, finally finished. Um, and I'm really, really happy with them. There is a little bit of uh, a pull right here that I have to fix, but you can see, let me see if I can figure this out. There we go. So there's the back, that's the back of the hand. Here's the palm and the thumb with the G for Gryffindor here. So they're done. This was a major, this was definitely a labor of love. I, but, you know, Kelsey is definitely knit worthy. She loves them. She's so excited for them. She is definitely going to appreciate them, but it's going to be a long time before I knit something like this again. I it just it was just really painful for my hands. So I do need to take a, a, a breather on um, knitting stuff at a gauge that small for a while. So I don't do permanent damage to my hands. But um, I'm really proud of them. I'm pleased with them. It's a beautiful color work piece. They're beautiful finished objects. But I think knitting at a small gauge has to kind of be something that you like and are used to if you want to get through it without pain. Um, and that's that. So now I'll move on to works in progress. And here is one that it has been quite a while uh, since it graced the channel. Living in my dear project bag is the Ephemeris shawl, which is by Deborah Gerhard. And this is knit in hazel knits, fingering weight yarn in the colors Hoppy Blonde right here and uh, Verdigris right here. It's been so long since I talked about this on the podcast that it took me a second to think of the names. Um, so let me kind of unbunch this for a minute. Oh my goodness. Oh, I have two pairs of needles in here because I traveled. So here we are. So this is roughly where I was the last time I showed you this on the podcast, which was, I don't even know how many months ago. I think it was almost before Christmas maybe. So it's been a while. Um, but here we are now. And I will give you a shot of where I've been with this just so you get an idea um so I pulled this out to have as my travel knitting for my trip to Wisconsin um I did still have this on the needles at the time uh and I had the mitts on the needles at the time but I am uh terrified of flying I talk about this a lot um I'm 
terrified of flying. Uh, I can get into kind of a brain fog when I'm flying. And so that is not conducive to needing to follow a detailed pattern or chart, which is what I would have had to do with the Brave at Heart mitts. Um, and I was also traveling only with carry-ons. So I didn't want to bring a ton of yarn, which is kind of what I would have had to do for this. Um, I just wanted something that was going to be pretty straightforward um, and small and easy to pack. So what I had available to me basically was the ephemera shawl. Um, I have chosen previously not to bring this because there is, you know, there's changing of patterns and tracking of rows and stuff. But um, I've done this trip to Wisconsin before. I know that the flights were not that long. Um, I knew I was going to have a lot of downtime at my hotel and at airports and stuff. Um, and so I just decided to go with it and see how it went. Um, I was traveling alone for the first time. <laughs> that was the other reason I was going to have like a lot of downtime to knit and stuff is because I was going to be by myself. So I just have to kind of do my own self amusement. I'm pretty good at uh, being by myself. I'm pretty independent. Um, I like my alone time. So that really wasn't a concern for me. It just meant that I was going to need some entertainment. So uh, this came with me. As you can see, it is still on my wooden needles. Um, I do change to wooden needles when I'm bringing knitting in my carry-on when I travel. However, I have traveled with metal needles before in my carry-on and I've traveled with metal crochet hooks. I have literally never so far been uh, even questioned by TSA. They've never bat, bat an eye at me. I've always been able to get them through on both metal and knitting uh, and wooden knitting needles. However, I do typically switch to wooden needles just in case. And what I will do is if I'm, if I'm packing just carry-ons, I'll just knit on wooden needles until I get home. If I'm going to have a checked bag, I will put metal needles in the bag, the checked bag, and I will switch. And then I will switch back to wood for the flights back home. Um, so that's just what I do. I have heard of people getting questioned by TSA. You are allowed per TSA rules to have knitting needles. It is allowed, but I've heard that it kind of just comes down to the particular agents who are working at the time. Um, I know that I personally have TSA pre-check. Um, so I don't know if that means that they just don't bother to question me because I've gone through the extra background checks and stuff of getting TSA pre-check for all my flights. Um, I don't know if that has anything to do with it, but I can say that before I had pre-check, I would travel with knitting in my bag and I did it with both metal and wooden needles and I still never had a problem. So, um, that is a question that I see come up a lot in, uh, like knitting groups and stuff. Can I travel? Can I bring it in my carry on? Yeah, <laughs> is the answer. Yes. Um, but I was thinking of doing a video about what I pack in my project bag when I'm going to be uh, flying um, because I again I see it as a topic a lot and I think that it might be helpful to have a video on it um, so that's probably coming soon but anyway this is my ephemeris now I'm not usually one to let projects languish like this I like to start a project and then finish it which is a ridiculous thing to say but I don't like to have like a bunch of neglected works in progress hanging around it makes me anxious um, but I have just gotten kind of pulled a away by other projects over time. Um, I knit a sweater for my niece. I, it, I didn't know what it was at the time, but I knit a sweater for my niece to give to my sister-in-law at her baby shower. I've taken, I've just taken on some other projects that for whatever reason had priority. And this kind of got ranked to the back of the line. Um, but it's something that I wanted to knit for a really long time before I started it. I love the yarn in the project, so it's nothing against the design. It just kind of kept happening but I am happy to have picked it up again and to be sharing it with you some more. So hopefully I can clear some needles here and stick with it more and you'll be seeing it more often. Um, next, I am going to cover my crochet project. I just caused like a landslide of skeins of yarn to casket out of my bag here. Uh, this is, ooh, <laughs> let me get my, okay. This is the Dear Baby Blanket, which is a, uh, my design. It is by NSP Designs. And um, I am knitting this in Knit Picks Mighty Stitch in the colors White, Sky, Sunflower, Cotton Candy, Alfalfa, and Wisteria. Here I'm on this purple stripe. So um, here we are. This purple stripe may be the last color of the stripe color in this. I had intended to only do these colors, 
but I might do one more based on what it looks like when I get to that point. I'm just going to kind of decide as I go. Um, the pattern is very easy to adapt to any size. It's not a big deal for me to add more stripes if I want. Um, I also include um, tips in the pattern if you want to make like, this is going to be a baby size, but if you want to make like a throw or a queen size blanket or whatever, I try to include some information in the pattern to help you do that. But here's the progress. Um, where's the gnome? Here is the gnome. So this is where I was last time I showed you. This is a gnome. This is from this is a simply serving charm that was gifted to me by Amanda of Little Bitty Delights, who also makes charms, uh, progress keepers. And so here's what I've gotten done since last I showed you. This is a gift for my friend Carrie, who is expecting. She's she's the next one that's due um, and got a couple weeks to go. And uh, so I really have to get this finished and get this in the mail to her. Um, but I'm really loving working on this and, and doing this blanket pattern again. Um, if any of anybody watching this has purchased the pattern from me, I am going to be issuing a pattern update when this is done. Um, I want to uh, reformat all of my patterns so that they're in the same style, first of all. Uh, and I also want to um, make a couple of tweaks to this particular pattern. I've just noticed some things I was crocheting along that I would like to phrase differently now and just things like that. So there's going to be an update coming um, on through Ravelry um, sometime soon-ish. Uh, and that's the Dear Baby pattern. This is supposed to be uh, crocheted with um, worsted weight yarn and a size J hook, but this one I am crocheting with a size K hook because I could not find my J's at the time I wanted to start this. Still not positive where they are. I think Birdie has stolen them. She likes to um, dig around in my, I keep my crochet hooks and my knitting needles in like a little, in little ceramic jugs, not jugs, mugs <laughs> uh, on a bookshelf. And she likes to like smack at them and dig around in them. I think she may have uh, made off with some of my crochet hooks. So that is the Dear Baby Blanket. And I just have one more project to share with you. Um, and that is a cross stitch. This is the Mario level birth record by Nerd Pillow. And this is for my niece. Uh, so I started this weeks ago. Again, we didn't know what it was going to be, um, but now we know. So this is um, made to look like a level of the Super Mario Brothers video game, the old, the old style. Um, and it is going to have a window right here. You can see the corner of it here. That's going to have um, her name and birth details, like date of birth, time of birth, and her birth weight, I think is, is everything that's gonna be there. But uh, here, I don't remember how much I had done last time, but I have worked on this a decent amount since then, and here is where I am now. So I don't think I had all of this filled in quite yet, and I know I did not have this. Um, it's not gonna look like much because I honestly picked the most tedious part of the pattern to start with, um, because it's just, a it's this part, this area, is a ton of fill in one solid color in a huge swath of space forever. So <laughs> that is what this is. This line runs all the way across the piece. Um, this is all going to be one solid color. So is this. I have to finish this black shadow here and finish this. So I'm in a tedious part of the pattern. The rest of it is not going to be this annoying. Over here is going to be where we have Mario and some, I think some Goombas are over here and there's a pipes and, you know, typical Mario stuff. And then the information up here. Um, I did chart out the details that will go here now that we know them. Um, the pattern includes a blank page for you to practice on and it includes um, charts for the alphabet and it also has each month charted already for you which is I think really like an extra detail that is really nice. Um, so I took that practice chart. I had printed myself off a couple copies with the intent that I would chart out the different options like if it was a boy or a girl because we knew what the names were going to be either way and um if it was going to be born in february or march because her due date was the 28th of february so it really could have gone either way um and i just never got around to finishing my chart options i think i made one and that was it so i had some extra pages so i just pulled one and i filled in the actual true information and so that is waiting for me to get to this part and fill it in. So um, this is another thing where Kelsey knows that I am making something. She just doesn't know what it is. Um, she does not know that it is a Mario birth record, but she knows that I needed, you know, I needed my niece's information. Lydia is her name. Uh, I needed her information before I could like finish it, finish it. She also knows that I am in a very tedious part of the pattern because I was complaining about it. <laughs> I told 
helped her, uh, she better appreciate it because it was really boring me to death right now. Um, and that's no fault of the pattern, you know, it is what it is that obviously that that makes it uh, feel like a Mario level. It just it's not always like that's not for me the big full coverage swaths of stitching one color is just not my jam. It is for some people, but for me, it's just like a slog. So I love this pattern. I don't mean to sound like disrespectful of it at all or for it to be construed that way because it's not. It's just, you know, that is not my jam. Uh, and that is everything I had to share with you. I do have some patterns written down for a new in my queue, but to be honest, I'm short on time today and I don't have time to go into all that. Um, I will do a quick personal update. I promised I would talk a little bit about about baby Lydia being born. Um, so I'll do that real quick and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. Um, so like I said, we were waiting for the word that Lydia was here. Fortunately, we live in Northern Virginia and it's pretty easy for us to get back home to the Baltimore area when, you know, stuff happens for visits and hanging out and family things, that kind of stuff. It's about an hour, hour and a half drive, depending on how many other people are in our way on the road. Um, so we were, we were waiting uh, to see what would happen. And uh, Kelsey and I for a long time had had a joke um, that I called the baby bagel because whatever like pregnancy app Kelsey was using uh, would compare it would compare each week it would compare baby size to a food but rather than being like fruits and vegetables which I think is what people like most apps normally do her app started comparing it to strange foods like at one point it was a taco and uh, <laughs> and uh, the weekend of my wedding uh, in October, baby was a bagel. And I don't know why, we just thought that was really funny. I think it was one of the first times that it was a weird food like that, um, instead of like a peach or whatever. So it just kind of stuck with us. And we jokingly started referring to the baby as bagel, um, which was also great because not knowing the sex, we could just call it bagel. Bagel is a gender neutral term. It's wonderful. Uh, so I've been calling the baby bagel ever since. And if you watched, I think it was my last episode where I talked about this, I have gotten into uh, sourdough baking. Um, I have started a sourdough starter. Her name is Liza Minnelli. We're very happy together. Um, and I've been practicing a lot of baking. I've been doing a lot of bread and bagels and coffee cake. Um, so part of uh, Kelsey's pregnancy journey <laughs> experience was that she ended up having some dietary restrictions and uh she couldn't eat a lot of things that she nor had really been missing um and so i promised her that when she had the baby i would bring her a bunch of treats that i would made with my sourdough starter so um on saturday morning i got up and i baked a coffee cake using some discard um, if you don't know what a sourdough starter is, I'm not going to talk about it all over again. You can check back in my previous video. I do explain it, or you can do a quick Google. Um, but there's a lot of recipes for using uh, your starter discard instead of just throwing that away every day. Um, so I got up and I baked a coffee cake and I said, okay, either today this is coffee cake going to be for Kelsey or I'm just going to give it away by the end of the day. And no baby came on Saturday, so I gave it away. And then Sunday morning, um, I woke up on, at around 7 a.m. to a message from her that they had gone to the hospital. So I got up at 7 a.m. and I made another coffee cake because <laughs> that was one of the things that I promised Kelsey. And I made her a batch of bagels, uh, fresh baked homemade sourdough bagels. That was how I spent my Sunday morning. And it was like absolutely perfect timing. I was baking the bagels. I was waiting, like I was really hoping that I would get them cooked and cooled in time. Um, and I was trying to debate because Adam was still asleep. I was debating like how late in the day if baby comes, do we say, okay, we'll just come up next weekend because we have to work and you know, do I wake him up now? Do I wake him up when I, we know baby's born? And I was kind of just like waiting on a message and hoping time would work out. And I swear it was like the best timing. I had the coffee cake baked and I pulled the bagels out of the oven and they had been cooling for maybe like 20 minutes when Adam burst out of the bedroom and said, get dressed, pack your stuff. It's a girl, we gotta go. And uh, so, I had been waiting for a message from Kelsey because she had been talking to us sporadically as she could. Um, but uh, he had gotten a text from his mom that baby was here. So it was like the best timing ever. Bagels were cool enough for me to pack up. I threw all the stuff I promised her in a bag and we headed up to Baltimore and got to meet baby Lydia. Um, we got to hold her. I got to feed her. She's very cute. She's very squishy. Um, we were very excited about her. So we got to meet the bagel. Um, Kelsey and I were joking in the hospital that she and I had both made very good bagels. <laughs> uh, 
Um, and uh, that's the story. So Adam and I have a niece now. We are Uncle Adam and Aunt Nicole. Very cool and weird. Uh, we're excited to have met the bagel that we've been talking about hypothetically for so long. And it's just, uh, we're all very excited. Um, so that's the story. Next up, as I said, the next baby that we're waiting on is my friend Carrie. We are not going to be dashing off to meet that one because Carrie lives in New York, so that's a little bit of a hike. But I'm, you know, we'll meet her at some point. Uh, we're very excited, and I have at least one other friend expecting a baby this year as well. So, the the projects, the, the tiny person projects, are not going to stop. Um, especially now that. I, I have a niece that I can do all kinds of things for. Um, but yeah, that's what we've been up to. So, and that's my personal update. So um, one last thing, it is fiber share time once again. If you don't know what that is, it's a giant worldwide, like Secret Santa style yarn swap. It's the best thing ever. I always freak out about it because it's my favorite. Um, and I am once again a featured vendor on the FiberShare discount code page. So now through sometime in late March, not sure of the date, if you use code SHAREYARN2020 in my shop, you will get 20% off pretty much everything. So I wanted to share that with you so you don't miss out. Please enjoy it. And I gotta go. So uh, thank you so much for watching. If you were new, I hope you liked it and decide to stay. If you're a return viewer, thanks for coming back. I would like you to stay also. Uh, give it a like. Give me a comment. Those really help me out. Subscribe if you want to know every time I post a new video. Um, I hope you have a great week. Get lots of crafting done. And I will see you next time.